Okay, good evening and welcome everyone to our launch of the Foundational Option Strategies Master Course that I, myself, Tony Zhang, Chief Strategy Officer here at Options Play, and Jessica Inskip, our Director of Education and Product, will be teaching over the next four weeks. Today, we're here to talk about arguably one of the most important strategies in an options trader's toolbox, but more importantly than the strategy, I want to talk through why the current market conditions that we find ourselves in with a more volatile market and a market that's heading lower, why the strategies that you're going to learn here today and over the next three weeks are incredibly useful in this type of market condition. I, I want to address the fact that the market conditions that we're in right now is uncertain. There's a lot of fear from investors, and typically this is where we see a lot of investors shy away from taking on risk, and that's totally understandable. But we want to show you how these strategies can help you reduce risk and add income in your portfolio. Today, we're going to specifically talk about adding income to your portfolio during these times of uncertainty that can help reduce portfolio volatility. So we're going to go over all of those things during today's session. But before we do, what we are going to discuss is purely for education and demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any of the specific securities that I'm going to use during today's session. So just to give you a background of this course, this is a four-part course. So what you're going to learn here today, you're going to be able to apply to during the next three sessions. The first three sessions, we're going to teach how to use specific option strategies. Today, we're going to talk about income. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about purchasing stocks with, at a discount using options. And then on October 4th, the third week, we're going to talk about how to apply leverage in this market with limited risk using options and do so in a way during a bear market. And then the last session on October 11th, we're going to do one specifically on how to position and how to think like a trader. So this has nothing to do with option strategies that has to do with position management, uh, position sizing that can help you survive through market downturns and how to become a profitable trader. So the course is meant to all build on top of itself so that after you finish all four courses, you have this foundational understanding of the basic option strategies that you should be familiar with to help you navigate through the type of volatile bear markets that we're currently in. We'll send you both the recording and the slides after each session so that you can review the, the information and you can review the recording at your own pace. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today, what we're gonna cover is what is a cover call. So that's the strategy we're gonna discuss. But more importantly, not only are we gonna look at covered calls, I wanna go through a real example. I specifically wanna spend some time talking through why the current market conditions that we find ourselves in is useful, why cover calls is now is a time to consider looking at cover calls in your portfolio, specifically when things are turning more volatile and when things are turning south from a, from a directional perspective, as well from a volatility perspective, because cover calls really align with both in the current market conditions that we're in. Then we'll talk about how to find the optimal cover call and the reports that we have built here at Options Play that allow you to implement what you're gonna learn here today and how to manage these trades once you're in them. And then we'll go through some live examples, show you the new platform that we recently just launched and some of the tools that are built into it before we answer your, your questions here at the very end. Now, I see quite a few of you have joined here me uh, today. Uh, but the primary thing that I want you to be able to walk, walk away from today's session is a clear understanding as to how can you maximize income in your portfolio using cover calls. So before we start with this, I want to ask the audience, how many of you have currently traded a cover call before? Type yes if you have sold the cover call before and type no if you've never sold the cover call before. Okay. I see quite a few no's. I see some yeses, but actually more no's than yeses. Okay, so uh, that's great. So many of you, this is a new strategy. For those of you that have answered yes, hopefully this shows you some of the mechanics for how to utilize the strategy, how you can make it as easy as possible to automate this process as, as much as possible using the tools here at Options Play. And for those of you that are brand new, 
Hopefully this gives you not only understanding of the strategy, why you should consider using it in the current market conditions that we're in, but also uh, understand how to implement it. So hopefully you'll be able to learn all three things by the end of today's session. But the primary thing that I want to first address is who is this uh, session for? Now, most investors, whether you trade options or not, typically hold most of your wealth in equities or some type of long-term investment. Most of the time, even though you might be speculative or you have a speculative account that you trade stocks actively in or, or ETFs or perhaps even options, they tend to allocate a smaller percentage of a portfolio for that. You tend to have your retirement account, you tend to have the bulk of your wealth invested in the markets in equity type investments. So what we're gonna target here today is not this active trading speculation portion of your portfolio. What we're gonna target here today is really this long-term investment portion of your portfolio, which is where the bulk of most investors' wealth sit and how to extract additional income from these investments that you've already made or investments that you already have in the broader portfolio. And we're gonna show you how you can extract sometimes anywhere from one to 2% in monthly income from that 80% of your portfolio that sit in those longer term investments. And I wanna show you specifically why the current volatility environment that we're in, a higher volatility environment actually favors this type of strategy, uh, meaning you actually get more income in this type of environment, and it will also help you reduce your portfolio volatility. So most investors are concerned in this type of market environment. We want to show you how you can take advantage of the volatility and reduce some of the volatility that you see in your portfolio. Okay. So and, and in order to do this, that, we're going to use a strategy called a cover call. For those of you that have never heard of a cover call or have not used a cover call before, I'll give you a quick preview of what it is, and we'll go through a real example. So what you're doing with a cover call is you're selling a call option against a stock position that you already own, and what that's going to allow you to do is generate income on that existing stock position. Now, Selling a call option obligates you to sell your stock at a specific price sometime in the future. So think about that for one second. Why do you own stocks? You own stocks because you believe that the stock is going to appreciate in value, and you would hope that in one day, sometime later, you're able to sell that stock at a higher price and be able to turn a profit on that investment. That is predominantly why most people own equities. Now, there are some secondary reasons you might own some stocks because they pay a high dividend and you rely on that dividend and for some form of income where capital appreciation is less important to you. But most investors that are invested in stocks are looking for capital appreciation. So what you're doing here with the call option is you are allowing yourself to potentially take profits sometime in the future at a higher price, but by obligating yourself to doing that, you're going to get paid income. And one thing that you should remember is that when you place a limit order, so let's say you own a stock at 100 crowns and you place a limit order to sell your stock at 120, you are also obligating yourself to sell your stock at a specific price sometime in the future. But the difference between a cover call and a limit order is that a cover call, premium, a cover call strategy, which obligates you the same thing, pays income versus a limit order does not pay income. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type one into the chat window if that makes sense to you. So you have similar obligations between placing a, a selling a call option as you do with placing a limit order, but the cover call is what pays you that income. And we'll talk about how much income that you get and how do you go about actually implementing this type of strategy. But I want to first make sure everyone understands conceptually how this strategy works. Now, there are some limitations. One, a limit order you can do for any number of shares. If you own one share, you own 1,000 shares, 5,000 shares, 20 shares, it doesn't matter. You can put a limit order for the specific number of shares that you're wanting to sell. In a cover call strategy, you're limited to doing them in 100 share blocks. So if you have 200 shares, you can either sell, choose to sell 100 shares or 200 shares. Those are your only options. If you only have 50 shares, this is not a strategy that you can use. You have to own at least 100 shares in order for this strategy to work. And you can only sell your, your securities 
in 100 share blocks, okay? So there are limitations. The second limitation is that a limit order will fill instantly once the stock hits that price. A cover call actually requires the stock to be above the, the price at the expiration date in order for your stock to be sold. So there are some limitations and differences between the two. They're not apples to apples, but they give you the same obligation, okay? So it's, I just wanna make sure that's clear to everyone before we move on. So before we jump back into cover calls, I wanna talk a little bit about the market environment we're in, right? So we talked about the cover call as a strategy from a conceptual perspective, but I wanna shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit about the current market conditions and why I encourage, especially for those of you that are not selling cover calls today, as to why this is a strategy you should think about right now in the market conditions that we have, which is the fact that if you look at the equity markets, we've seen a significant decline in the equity markets over the past year. So far, there isn't a clear indication that that bear market is over. If anything, if you look at central banks around the world, there's still plenty of work left to be done to in order to fight the inflationary environment that we're in, to fight uh, you know, inflationary across just about every single spectrum uh, that we can possibly imagine. Food, electricity, um, energy prices. These are all things that are currently still fairly uh, sticky in terms of inflation and central banks around the whole world is trying to battle it. Not just the US central banks, the Swedish central banks, all of the global central banks are currently battling the same thing. And as they continue to rise in, raise interest rates, we will likely continue to see equity markets move lower. Um, this is the NASDAQ 100 uh, US index. And you see the clear downtrend. And every single time we've tested this downtrend, we've seen a rejection. So from my perspective, my expectation, especially given the interest rate environment that we're expecting to see over the next uh, at least three months, my expectation is to see equities lower. And we're going to show you why cover calls benefit from markets moving lower. But the secondary thing that we want to talk about is volatility. Volatility has also been on the rise. This is the vol Q. This measures the volatility of the NASDAQ 100 index. The NASDAQ 100 makes up of the 100 largest non-financial stocks listed on the NASDAQ exchange in the US. And what it measures is the volatility of that index. And we've seen this year, uh, it made a low around the 1415 mark and now it's trading at about 32%. That's the expected volatility over the next 30 days for the NASDAQ 100 index. So we're looking at double the volatility. And when you double the volatility, what happens is that the same strategy, selling cover calls when volatility is at 15, is going to generate subs whoops, is going to generate substantially lower uh, premium or income than when vol is trading at 32 or perhaps even a little bit higher if it reaches up into the 3840 level. The higher volatility goes, the higher income you collect from these types of strategies. So you're currently in an environment where volatility favors selling volatility because you're going to collect more income. And not to mention, volatility is what we call a mean reverting asset meaning it's an asset that generally oscillates around an average price. When things get too extreme to the upside, they tend to fall. And that's exactly the environment that we find ourselves in, is volatility is higher than average, which statistically speaking, makes it more advantageous to be an option seller. And that's, that's exactly what a cover call does. It's short the market, meaning it's short the, the, the asset, it's short volatility, and it also puts time decay in your favor. And the market environment that we're in will generate more income. And that's why right now is an opportune time to look at this one strategy, even if you've never explored it before. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay. So, Let's talk about a real example. I'm gonna use NIBE, uh, the B shares, uh, which is currently trading around 105 crowns. So this is a chart here of that stock, right? This is a stock, one of the few stocks in the market that's in a clear uptrend. And recently it had a pullback to that uptrend. And perhaps you think now is an opportunity to look for some long exposure. Not a lot of stocks that are in this particular position, but NIBE uh, currently is. So let's say you own 100 shares of this stock at $105. And let's say you have a target price of 100, I'm sorry, 105 crowns. And let's say you have a target price of 120 crowns. So what I wanna show you is if you are a equity investor, what that risk profile looks like, 
versus if you were to sell cover calls, what that risk profile looks like. And hopefully this gives you an understanding of how to utilize this type of strategy. So if I own 100, 100, 100 shares of this stock at 105, and I wanna sell this stock at 120, as an equity investor, I would place my limit order to sell the stock at 120 crowns. And that's gonna give me a risk of 105 crowns because that's what I paid for it. A potential reward of 15 crowns because that's the difference between what I sell it for and what the price that I purchase it for. And I can only collect dividends and I'm exposed to this stock until it reaches my 120 crown strike price, uh, target price. That's an equity investor. And I think everyone here on this, on this session here today is probably familiar with this part on the left hand side. Now let's talk about what does it look like to be an options investor. So same thing. I'm, I own the stock at 105. I think it'll reach 120. So what I can do is I can sell a call option at the 120 crown strike price, the target price that I have. But the difference here is that when I place a limit order, I don't get paid anything. But when I sell a cover call, I get paid one crown. And this is going to generate an income stream for you as long as the stock doesn't reach this specific target price by the expiration date. So let's say by October, the stock doesn't reach this 120 target price. I keep my one crown and I can do it over again. I can put in another order to sell, uh, maybe for November at 120. And if it doesn't reach that price again, I might collect a $1. And I can do this continuously month after month until the stock reaches my target price, which is what you're doing with the limit order anyways. You're placing a limit order and you're waiting. And the difference is that when you're selling cover calls, that order effectively expires. And every time it expires, you can collect premium and you can keep doing this until the stock reaches your target price. So even in a single cycle, meaning if let's say the stock reaches 120 by the October expiration date, one, I've reduced my risk. I've, do, I've reduced my overall risk down to 104 crowns because I've collected one crown in income. I've now also increased my potential reward to 16 crowns because I've reduced my cost basis down to 104. And I can continuously generate roughly one crown in income per month until the stock reaches my 120 crown target price. So the two equity investor and, and options investor ultimately in terms of selling the position are very similar in terms of outcome. But the primary difference is the income stream that you can generate while you wait for the stock to reach your target price. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type three into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay, so now we've gone, gone through a real example of this. I think I want to do a little bit of a thought experiment here with everyone, because this is arguably the most important part of what you learn from today's session, right? You learn the strategy, you learn the the the... the the theory behind it, but let's talk about the mechanics of actually doing this. So I'm going out and let's say that I want to look at selling cover calls on NIBE. Let's say I bought it at 105, which is just around one here, right here, right? And I'm going to show you that I can, because think about, uh, think about a stock that you buy, right? You could place a limit order at any price that you want to sell your stock at, 105, 110, 115, 120, 150, whatever your target price is. Now, Depending on what your target price is, you're going to get paid different levels of income for that order. So here, what I have is the stock, let's say the stock is just around 105. It's currently trading around 106 when I looked at this last night. Um, let's say you, you have a target price of 112 and a half, and this collects two crowns. Uh, let's say another person has a target price of 115, a little higher. This collects one and a half crowns. And then you look at a 120 uh, target price that collects only one crown. So what I want to do a bit of a thought experiment here is ask the audience, if you were looking at these types of cover calls to sell, and this is how much premium or how much income you collect, the 112s collect two crowns, the 120s collect one crown, and the one in between collects one and a half crowns. And this gives you the return, right? Because if I collect one crown out of a 106 crown stock, that's a little under 1%. But if I do that throughout the full year, that's gonna annualize, annualize out to just shy of 10%. If I collect one and a half crowns out of 106 crown stock, that's a little over one and uh, about one and three quarters of a percent, that's gonna annualize to close to 20%. 
And then if I select this one that collects two crowns, that's almost two and a half percent, which annualizes to 27% in terms of income. So I want to ask those of you that are on this call today, which strike price do you think you would choose if you learn the strategy and you're looking at an options chain, you're asking yourself, what target price do I have and what income level would I choose? Type your answer into the chat window, 102 and a half, 115 or 120. Which strike price would you choose? I see a couple of, uh, I see actually a lot of 115s. Uh, I see a couple of 120s. I'm surprised I haven't seen any 112 and a halves. Uh, okay, so the answers are predominantly either 115 or 120. You know, I tend to find that a lot of people tend to gravitate, to gravitate towards either this one or this one. Uh, you know, I think most people gravitate towards the middle one because they just think the middle is always better. You don't want to be at either end of the extreme. And then a lot of people select this 112 and a half level because it generates what looks like the largest returns or the largest yield on your portfolio, right? Who wouldn't want 27% versus 9%, right? So this is where we've done a lot of research. We've back tested this type of strategy over and over again, tens of thousands of times. And What's very clear to us is that there is one specific strike price that, that is leaps and bounds better for you in the long run when you're using this type of strategy month after month, quarter after quarter. And that is this 120 strike, the one that actually collects least amount of premium. And a lot of people will say, why would you prefer something that collects only 10% yield versus something that collects 27% yield? And that's really where this comes into play because the difference between this one and this one is only one additional crown in income, right? So if I select the 112 and, 112 and a half crown strike price, I collect an extra one crown. But what am I giving up if the stock was to rally significantly? Because that's why we own the stock, right? We own the stock because we think it's going to go higher. So what happens if that stock goes higher? Well, if you sold the 112 and a half, you bought the stock at 105, you would have to sell it at 112 and a half. Even if the stock, you know, all of a sudden shoots up to 150, guess what? You don't participate on that move because you've, you've committed yourself to selling your stock at 112 and a half. Think about placing a limit order at 112 and a half and waking up the next day and the stock shoots up substantially higher. And you're not participating on it because you've committed yourself to selling the stock at 112 and a half. So that's what's happening when you're selling a cover call is you're committing to, to selling your stock at a specific price. Now, so what you're doing here is you're basically saying, I'll take an extra one crown, right? You're getting one extra crown in income in exchange for seven and a half crowns of capital appreciation. And what we find is that may not happen this month, may not happen next month, but every once in a while, the stock makes a big move. And what you give up in upside substantially outweighs the additional income that you might collect for an extra couple of months. So you might be able to collect an extra two or three crowns by selling the more aggressive cover call. But then when the stock really makes a big move, you lose out on all that upside. And that is what underperforms this strategy here where you get more income versus the one that has actually less income. The less income strategy will give you that capital appreciation, which is really what you want when you own the stock. The income is kind of nice to have, but it's a secondary thing. The most important thing is to be able to take advantage of when the stock makes a big move. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type four into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And arguably, if there's nothing else that you take away from today's session, that is what you should learn, which is when you're selecting cover calls, it's always tempting to go for the strike price that collects more income because you're thinking, who wouldn't want one crown versus two crowns? Yeah, of course, everyone wants two crowns. But think about what you're giving up on the back end. And most, and, and, and statistically speaking, when we look at this, uh, you know, this strategy, and you have to think about it, not just on this one cover call you're selling, you should think of yourself as someone who's going to continuously sell cover calls month after month for all the equities that you own. If you think about it from all the trades added together, 
the extra one crown here or there is not going to offset the seven, eight, ten crowns that you give up when the stock makes a big move on a specific month. And you have no way to know when that's going to happen. It could come out of nowhere. Some great news comes out of left field and the stock's up 10% one day. Well, guess what? You want to make sure you participate in that. And the only way to do that is to be conservative with your cover calls, okay? And we generally use deltas to select our cover calls. And I'll show you on the platform where you can find the deltas, but the deltas sp uh, tell you what the probability of the stock being above the strike price at expiration. So the 15 delta for the 120 strike means that there's only a 15% chance the stock will be above 120 at expiration. That's how we typically be, uh, that's how we're able to consistently select strategies where 85% of the time, my cover calls, I'm going to collect that one crown. 15% of the time, the stock's going to shoot through my, my strike price and I'm going to be able to take profits on my stock. That's kind of the risk to reward that we typically see. And keep in mind, this is a stock that pays half a percent dividend yield. Half a percent. Your cover call pays 9% dividend yield. So even though 9% doesn't sound as good as 27, but you're still getting leaps and bounds more from the cover call piece than you are getting from the dividend piece. And we usually think of the dividend as the income part of your portfolio. But as you can see, the cover calls will typically greatly outweigh what you get on the dividend yield side. So that's really what the important part of what you learned here today is the strategy and how much income that you can generate. So what we do here at Options Play is we publish a cover call report. This gives you a list of every single stock and how much income that you will actually collect from that specific strategy. And this is designed to help you better understand, um, this is designed to help you quickly uh, identify the opportunities in the market using this very specific strategy and do so in a way where you are instantly um, know what stock to pick, what, I'm sorry, what expiration date and what strike price to pick um, using this cover call report. So this is a report that was generated today. And what we do is we sort the report based on the annualized return of the strategy. So what you can do is you can simply go down the list and find stocks that you own in your portfolio. Let's say you own Embrace uh, Gaming in your, uh, Embrace in your portfolio. Well, looking at the October 21st expiration, 66 crown strike price will generate 1.25 crowns in income. That happens to be 2% of the stock's price. If you can generate two crowns on a 66 crown stock, or, or rather in this particular case, a 60 crown stock, that's 2% that you're earning in a roughly 30 days. And this will give you a 27% yield on your portfolio. So this report, automates what you just learned in helping you pick the expiration date and strike price. So this is designed to help make your life a thousand times easier and apply what I just taught you instantly for any stock that you might own in your portfolio. We cover all securities that have a valid cover call uh, in the three major markets, uh, Stockholm, um, Helsinki and, and Copenhagen. So the three uh, markets that we cover, you'll be able to find uh, your stock that, that you own the stock in and specifically what expiration date and what strike price to sell. And you can use that in the options play platform. So if I'm looking at Embrace, Embracer Group, I can click on the income tab and I remember that I was looking at the October 66 and I can modify this to change it to the 66 strike and I can see exactly how much premium I can get, get at the present moment, which is um, actually a little bit, uh, uh, yeah. So the stock's currently trading at 61. I'm gonna collect 1.48 crowns, which is actually 2.43% yield in 31 days. Compare that to the stock that I own that pays zero dividends. This is really what allows me to quickly um, look at opportunities with this specific strategy and understand my risk to reward and how much yield I can collect. This report automates all of that work for you so that you don't have to manually pick what strike, what expiration, and you have all of the information available to you already in understanding um, how much yield you're getting and what expiration and, and strike price. So you can spend more of your time uh, doing other things rather than researching and pulling up options chains in order to place these trades. So this is all available to you on the cover call report, as well as 
on the options play tool. Um, and I'll show you how to use the options play tool here in a minute also for finding these types of opportunities. But the report is the easiest place to look through a whole portfolio. You might have five, 10 stocks that you own at least 100 shares of. And what we're trying to do is helping you automate the process for finding exactly what expiration date and strike price to sell to generate the type of income that we're showing you. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type five into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about once you sell a cover call, what to do. So three things can happen once you sell a cover call. The stock can go higher, the stock can go sideways, and the stock can go lower. We're going to talk through all three and how you want to manage these trades. The first one is that the stock goes higher. Now, a lot of people tend to think that this is a bad scenario because the cover call that you've sold is now losing money. But keep in mind, this is the best possible scenario because what you're doing here is that you own stock and the stock has gone higher. That means you've made money. That's a good thing. So keep that in mind. What you're doing is you're obligating to potentially sell your stock at a, a higher price. And this allows you to do that. So be, remember that when the stock goes higher after you sold the cover call, that's a good thing. Now, if for any reason the stock goes higher and you think the stock can continue to go higher and you don't want to sell your stock at the strike price that you've sold, let's say the stock goes to 120. And now you're thinking to yourself, hey, I think the stock can go to 130 or 140. Well, guess what? You can buy back the call option that you've sold and sell a new cover call at 130 or 140, whatever your new target price is or whatever new strike price that you wanna use on that cover call, you're not obligated to sell your stock as long as you buy back the short call option that you've sold before your expiration date. And you shouldn't wait till the last day as long as you do it within the last one to two weeks, that's when you can roll your position. That's basically buying back the call that you've sold and selling a new cover call. We call that a roll. Uh, you can, generally speaking, uh, what I have found is that most Nordic brokers require you to do this in two separate orders, unless you trade with interactive brokers that allows you to trade that in a single strategy. Uh, but generally speaking, you don't want to do anything until the last couple of weeks. You don't want to roll too early either because that will lock in a loss for that cover call. So, but the most important thing to remember is that when the stock rallies after you sold the cover call, that is a good thing. That is not a bad thing. You shouldn't be sad about that. You shouldn't be thinking to yourself, I've lost money on the cover call or I could have made more money if I didn't sell the cover call. There's always shoulda, coulda, woulda. You're never gonna be able to sell your stock at the highest possible price. That's just not realistic. So be happy if the stock rallies because you, now you've made money in your underlying capital, uh, in your underlying position, and you can take a profit and you might wanna take those profits and trade the next strategy or in the next stock that you might wanna own. So that's one of the, things, the key things to remember if the stock rallies, okay? Does that make sense, everyone? Please type six into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay, now let's talk about what happens if, if after you sold a cover call, the stock just goes sideways. This is really kind of your best case scenario sometimes, meaning, uh, meaning the call option that you've sold is basically going to expire worthless. Um, some people like to roll early, and the rule of thumb here is that if you've made 75% of the potential return on a cover call, you can buy back the call option and basically go back to report and sell a new cover call. But there's no harm in holding these to expiration. Uh, you know, it really just depends on how actively you trade and how much time you have to manage these. If you don't have a lot of time, I would let these expire worthless. If you're, if you're the type of trader that looks at your portfolio every single day and you see that you sold something for, I don't know, 10 crowns or eight crowns and now it's trading at two crowns because you've made 75% of what you can potentially make, well, buy back that call for two crowns and sell a new cover call that might generate another eight to 10 crowns. This way you don't have to wait for those last two crowns to potentially generate more income, but there's no harm in holding it to expiration. But the most important thing is that if your calls expire on Friday, make sure that on Monday you log back in, you use that report and you sell a new cover call immediately. This way you can continuously collect income. If you let your calls expire worthless and you don't sell a new cover call, now you don't have that order to, to sell your stock at a higher price and you're not generating any income. So I know a lot of traders that are busy, they tend to only sell monthly incomes, uh, I'm sorry, monthly uh, options, because they know that on the third Friday of every single month, that's when they manage their cover calls. They don't have to manage it every single week. So it just depends on kind of how often you look at your portfolio. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type seven into the chat window if that makes sense to you. 
Perfect. And lastly, what if the stock goes lower after you sell your cover call? And I think this is probably in this current market environment, what's most likely to happen if you think markets are going to continue to move lower. This is really one of the few opportunities where you can generate more income even faster. Um, and, and this, again, speaks to the current market environment we're in. This is really where you have an opportunity to roll your cover call early, meaning collect the full profits that you've made, the income that you've made earlier than you expect, and sell a new cover call and try to sell more premium and collect more income. Again, in a bear market, this is the more likely outcome when that happens. But these are the types of strategies that you do not want them to go to expiration because if you let it to go all the way to expiration, you're just waiting around a lot for virtually no income. When the stock drops, you can buy back the call for pennies on the dollar. The rule of thumb is usually 20 to 25% of the premium that you sold it for. If you can buy it back for it now, it, it clears out your obligation and allows you to sell a new cover call and generate more income. But the, the primary question that you have to ultimately ask yourself is, as the stock declines, do you want to remain invested in the stock, right? So for example, if let's say this particular stock that I own declines below this level, I might say to myself, my original thesis that this stock will just continue moving higher is likely wrong, and I might want to consider getting out of my stock. That's a whole separate de de decision that you have to make. And if you decide that you want to get out of the stock, then you do have to buy back the call option that you've sold before you sell the stock because the call option that you sold is tied to the stock because the call option is the obligation to sell the stock that you own. If you no longer own the stock, you cannot satisfy this obligation and your brokerage firm will uh, have typically some type of margin call or require some type of margin in order for you to continue holding on to that call option. So those are some of the things to consider in a bear market. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type eight into the chat window if that makes sense to you. Perfect. Okay, so that covers what I wanted to share with you regarding the strategy. Now what I wanna spend a little bit of time is showing you the tools that we have here at Options Play that help you implement everything that you've learned here today. Now, if you're brand new to Options Play, you can sign up for everything that I've shown you, the platform, the cover call report, education like this, completely free of charge at optionsplay.se. This is the see of the, of the NASDAQ exchange in the Nordics. Uh, they have effectively paid for your access to access this technology, for us to run these reports and run these education events for Nordic investors, completely free of charge for Nordic investors. And you also get real-time quotes for this platform. So a lot of value that you're getting completely free of charge by going to optionsplay.se. Many of you joining here today, I know I recognize your name, so I know many of you are already registered. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, please go to optionsplay.se. It's a free registration. It takes just 10 seconds to sign up and it gives you access to everything that I'll be showing you here in the next few minutes, which is the new Options Play platform that we have launched last month. This now includes new credit spread strategies that are automated for you. It includes a bunch of charting updates, and it also includes new portfolio tracking and paper trading. So if you're brand new to options and you want to paper trade, or if you want to track an existing portfolio, perhaps you have a portfolio in Avanza, perhaps you have a portfolio in Nornet, and you have another portfolio of interactive brokers, and you want one place to aggregate all of that, you can now do that in the new Options Play platform. And again, this is all free at optionsplay.se. Um, this platform now includes automated credit spreads and straddles for those of you that are a bit more advanced in this high volatility environment. These are the strategies that tend to shine in these types of environments. Whether you're bullish or bearish, you can find these strategies during these high implied volatility strategies. And our platform not only designs the, exp uh, the strategy, but also selects the expiration date and strike price for you. Uh, you can do this using the platform instantly for any symbol that you type in, and you can even use these to build more advanced strategies like iron condors and butterflies. We uh, launched a new charting package into a new platform, which gives you the ability to save your indicators. There are now 100 plus indicators available in the new charting package, and it now includes drawing tools like trend lines, fib retracements, and you can annotate it uh, with, uh, with arrows in your own text to help you remember specific levels that you're um, looking at for a specific security. 
And most importantly is the portfolio tracking and paper trading, which I'll spend a few minutes to showing you that here today. The ability to track your portfolio now in options play is, uh, you know, especially if you're trading at a brokerage firm that doesn't pair, uh, you know, uh, two legs together, you know, our platform will help you pair the two legs together and show you a net PL so that you can understand how much you're making or losing on a, on a, on a complex position like a spread and know, and that's going to help you also determine when it might be time to get into a portfolio, uh, into, uh, I'm sorry, exit a trade, you know, either at a, t at a profit or at loss. Um, and, and these are all tools that we build to help ourselves. And hopefully you'll be able to take advantage of that here as well. And the last tool I want to show you, which is arguably one of the most important tools, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more during our last session, which is how to think like a professional trader. You know, I tend to find that a lot of retail traders tend to ask the qu question, how much money can I make from a strategy? And I always tell traders, that's the wrong question you're asking because the, how much money can you make is always unlimited. The question is not how much money can you make? The question is how much money can you afford to lose? How much risk can you take before you close yourself out of a position? And that is what determines how much money you can make, is how much money are you willing to risk. And we have now a new portfolio contract calculator that helps you stay in your lane. As a market strategist over the past 16 years, the most common thing that I see from retail investors is this consistent pattern of blowing up accounts. And if any of you have can relate to that, where as a trader, you've made decisions that ended up risking a much larger portion of your portfolio than perhaps you originally intended on when you entered the position, type one into the chat window if you can relate to that. Or maybe you bought a stock, didn't go in your favor, you bought some more hoping that you get it back to break even and the stock kept going lower. Next thing you know, you've lost a lot more money than you originally intended to do that. You, that happens with stocks, that happens with options, that happens with futures. I've seen it in just about every single asset class, especially when there's leverage involved. And, and it really all comes back to, it has nothing to do with your strategy, nothing to do with your indicators. It has to do with how much money you put on the line with each strategy to begin with. So our portfolio contract calculator is designed to help you instantly calculate the right amount of premium to, to uh, number of contracts to trade on an options trade so that you stick in your lane and that you don't exceed your initial risk tolerance. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time talking about that on our last session uh, in the fourth part of our series that's gonna help wrap up everything that I've shown you here today. But the platform is designed into three sections. You have trade ideas, watch list, and portfolio on the left-hand side. You have our security analysis panel here in the middle that gives you summary technical analysis and trends. And then you have trading and income here on the right hand side. Today, we're gonna to spend our time on income because that's what we're here to talk about. In the third session in our series, we're gonna talk about the trading section. We're gonna go over bullish strategies, bearish strategies, and even this high implied volatility strategy that I was referring to before. But today we're gonna to spend our time more on the income tab. And what I suggest for investors, if you're interested in the, pro in the strategy that I showed you here today, I highly recommend that you go to the watch list tool and you set yourself up a watch list. Create a watch list uh, in the tool. Create a new watch list, you know, uh, stocks that I own, whatever you want to name it, right? And enter the stocks that you actually own in your portfolio. So, uh, for example, uh, if you have uh, H&M, uh, if you have... Um, uh, sorry. There we go. And let's go back to this. Um, sorry, I'm having some issues adding some strategies to my portfolio. But uh, once, once you add your um, symbols to your watch list, what you have to do is simply click on it and the options play tool will show you the exact expiration date and strike price that you need in order to sell on this cover call. So for example, if I'm looking at sand, uh, let's say I own Sandvik, uh, it's currently trading at around 157 crowns. Just by clicking on it and using the income tab, the platform will show me exactly what expiration date and strike price that I would wanna sell in order to generate income on this specific 
uh, uh, symbol. Uh, looks like I'm having some internet connection issues here. Give me one second. Um, I see a couple of questions here already uh, asking questions about the recording. And yes, um, you know, we will send both the recording and the slides so that you can follow along at your own pace after we finish here today. Let me just reset my platform here real quick. And the question here from Christian asking, can we do cover calls and in indices on optionsplay.se? You can't do cover calls and in indices because you can't own the indice. Um, so that's the thing that you can't do. So keep that in mind. Now you can do a naked call option on an index, absolutely. Um, but you can't do it on an index from a covered perspective. You can sell a naked call and that is absolutely uh, allowed, uh, presuming that you have the, um, uh, the options clearance clearance from your brokerage firm to do so, uh, but that is one thing that you need to consider. Okay, while I get the platform up and running, I'll just walk you through the, the cover call screener, because this is really where I think most of you will spend a lot of your time, which is using a, a screener like this, which makes it a lot easier for you to just look up a security that you own in your portfolio. I usually tell people just go from the top down because you just look for stocks that you own. This is sorted based on highest annualized return. And you can just simply go down the list and find stocks that you own. Let's say you own Nokia. Uh, the stock's currently trading around 50 crowns. So if I sold the November 55 crown uh, strike price, I'm gonna collect just shy of one crown. But that's still 1.75% of, of the stock's value in just 31 days. Now, I'm interested to see what the premium that Nokia, uh, or you know, how much dividend? I don't think Nokia necessarily pays a dividend, but we can take a look. Um, let's let's take a look at Nokia. Nokia currently pays a zero point four two percent dividend. Remember, that's zero point four two percent in a whole year. This I'm getting paid one point seven five percent in just thirty one days. So that gives you a sense for how big of a difference the yield that you're getting from a cover call is relative to the dividend yield. You can also click on the income tab for Nokia to see an October 54 cover call in order to sell. And this is what you can do this. You can do it either in the platform and you can also do it in the, um, you can either do it in the platform or you can do it on our, uh, uh, you know, using this cover call report. And this is really something that's designed to help make your life a thousand times easier. And I was saying before, if you have a watch list with your securities that you own, you can simply click on a symbol and instantly using the options play tool within a few seconds, know exactly what expiration date and what strike price to sell, how much premium you're collecting, how much yield that is, and know that and you can compare how much yield relative to the stock's dividend. So here, if I own um, Asa B, I, I'm earning almost 2% a year in income, which is, I would say, pretty average from a dividend yield perspective. But if I sold the cover call, I can generate 1% in just 31 days. So what I would normally take six months to earn in terms of income, you owning the stock, I can earn that same amount in 30 days using a cover call. So hopefully this shows you just how big of a difference in yield that you get from the dividend versus the cover call. Does that make sense? Um, please type yes into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And how many of you are surprised at how much yield you can generate from this type of strategy? Type one if you're somewhat surprised at how much yield you can generate from this type of strategy. Yeah, um, I see a lot of ones. And you can just take a look at, you know, the annualized return numbers, right? When was the last time you saw dividend yields in the, you know, low 20s, high teens? Um, it almost never exists. It's almost very, very small, you know, mining stocks, energy stocks, when they're kind of really getting beaten down, do you see these types of numbers? Yet yeah, these are the types of numbers that you can see very easily on many of the names, Swedish Match, 
uh, you know, 1.1% over 31 days, which annualizes out to 12%. Um, how much does Swedish match pay? I think Swedish match probably pays 0.85%, uh, yet this cover call pays, you know, well over, um, in this particular case, 1% in just 31 days. So you're earning more in 30 days from this cover call than you're generating in a full year owning this particular stock. Um, and, and, and you know this is something to consider right now, it's after hours, so the bid ask quotes are pretty wide. So I typically like to use the mid price as, my, as, as what I'd like to, to do. Um, and then when you click on the trade button, we also have this short code. Now, for those of you that trade, um, and I'll try to find this link for you, but when you click, when you trade at Nordnet, and this is something that I've, uh, I'll, I'll try to show you here in one second, but you can take this short code that's on your platform and you can type it into your Nordnet account and you can use that to find the specific expiration date and strike price that you're buying or selling. And we built this so that it's easier for you to take a trade that you're looking at an options play you just simply click on the trade button and you can copy the short code and paste it into your uh, Avanza account, your Nordnet account, and you'll be able to use that to search for the specific expiration, ex expiration date and strike price that you are looking at. Now, right now, after hours, so the bid asks are all zero, but if we were looking at this during market hours, we'd be able to see the bid ask quote and be able to enter our orders if you have a Nordnet or wherever you have your account. So the options play tool has really been designed to help you better understand how to use the, utilize these strategies in your portfolio. And you can even track these, for example, um, in, our, uh, in our paper trading portfolio. This is something that's new. This is something I wanna show you. So let's say I own hundred shares of this security and let's say I wanna sell a cover call on it. Let's say I wanna sell that October uh, 120 uh, strike price on, on Swedish match. Let's say I want to trade this particular trade. Well, I can click on the trade button now and you'll see this, uh, this option at the bottom to say add position to my portfolio. So you'll all, everyone will have a default my portfolio. You can go in and select your own and build new portfolios as well. So you can create a Nordnet portfolio, an Avanza portfolio. You can do anything that you want, but by default, you'll have a portfolio that you can add positions to. And when you go to your portfolio tool here on the right-hand side, you'll be able to click on portfolio and see the positions that you have. And you can add as many positions as you want. You can create multiple portfolios and you can add positions to specific portfolios and you can see how they all perform. So here's, here's my Swedish match. I own hundred shares um, and I own, and, I'm, uh, and I have this uh, short call option. And, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, and you can edit these positions as well. So if you wanna change uh, this, this is actually should be a short one contract. I must have entered that incorrectly before, but you can, you can modify all of these positions in your portfolio and they will reflect. Um, so now, as you can see, it shows up as a covered call. I own 100 shares at 108.93, and I've sold the October 120 calls at 120. And you can modify these. So for example, if you've already owned this position, and maybe you sold this at a different uh, strike price, or maybe you own the stock at a different price, you might say that oh, I bought the stock at 105. So you can edit that. Um, and then you can edit, say, and say, I sold this at 180 or 170, and you can enter that as well. Uh, I think this should be 15,000. Uh, yep, 15,000, if I'm not mistaken. And this will allow me to see, um, or, or rather, I think I, I entered that correct, incorrectly. Um, I, I entered 150 crowns versus 105 crowns. But you can see how you can easily manipulate positions in your portfolio. You can add them easily by just going to the trade tab. So let's say you're looking at this bearish position here on Husqvarna and you wanna track it. You've never traded the strategy before and you just wanna try it out. Well, you can do that. Click on the trade button, add it to your portfolio. And now this, this is now tracked in your portfolio. I suggest that you select, you create multiple portfolios by clicking on the manage button. You can create new portfolio. So let's say you have a Nordnet uh, live account. Um, you know, you can add that. Uh, maybe you might have another, you know, interactive brokers, IBKR live account. Um, and then you might want to create a paper trading portfolio, right? And you can say paper trading and you can create as many um, 
uh, of these portfolios as you'd like. And whenever you use the options play tool, any, any trade that you're looking at, anything that you're, you're currently paying attention to, uh, you can simply click on the trade and uh, you can um, manage the trades using uh, our tool. You can click on close position, right? So let's say you're looking, you have this position and you're closing it, you click on trade. You can add this closing position to your portfolio. And when you click on add position, it will remove that position from your paper trading portfolio. So you can do full life cycle opening trades, uh, adjusting trades, rolling trades, closing trades, all done and it reflects in the appropriate portfolio. So if let's say I was looking at this cover call on Swedish Match um, and I was trying to sell that October, uh, well, let's not use Swedish Match. Let's use another uh, stock. Let's use H&M. Let's say I'm looking at selling H&M cover calls. Well, I can look at owning the stock. I'll sell a call option against it. Let's say I sell that October uh, 120 call option um, and I click on the trade button. And let's say I wanna add this to my paper trading portfolio. I just click on add position. And now when I go to my portfolio, I can select uh, my, my, my paper trading portfolio and see that position as well. And now I can see my, my positions across all of my portfolios, especially for those of you that have multiple portfolios at different brokers. This can allow you to aggregate those, those positions and see how each one of those are, uh, are performing. And you can see the, uh, the P&L both on the, on, the, on the dollar amount as well as on the percentage basis. So really helpful in giving you a better understanding when you're trading more complex strategies how much money am I making or losing on the net position that's going to help you determine whether you want to close that position or keep it open? We'll talk a little bit more about this during my third session, which is um, on how to uh, trade using leverage. So this uh, October 4th, leverage your portfolio with limited risk. We're going to talk about how to uh, enter these positions in your portfolio and what rules you can set in place to know when to take profits and when to cut losses and how you can use our portfolio tool in order to do so. So with that, that covers everything that I wanted to share with you here today. I covered a lot of things, but I think the most important thing to remember is that all of these tools that I've shown you here today, there's a lot, and we're going to be showing you more over the next three weeks, is all available to, for free at Options Play. SE. So please sign up for it if you have not already done so. Uh, in I'll put it, uh, the, uh, the um, website into the chat window here one more time for someone who wants to take a look at signing up if you have not already done so. So with that, what I want to do is I want to open this up for q and I'll try to answer a few questions before I sign off here for today. There is a chat window at the bottom of your screen and there's a Q&A window. Um, Take a look at uh, the Q&A window, type your questions there, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I have time for here today. So someone's asking, is the VOLQ index only for Swedish markets? No, it's actually for the US markets. Um, so there is no volatility index for the Swedish markets as far as I know. Um, but I think that the US markets is a pretty good proxy because what you're really tr trying to get a sense for is volatility rising. And, and, and declining. And when you look at the, the European markets, the Swedish markets relative to the US markets, correlations are extremely high. So it's just to give you a sense for whether volatility is high or low. And looking at some of the US indices that are very popular, like the VIX or the VOLQ, give you that sense for whether volatility is high or low. I don't think the portfolio is available in Sweden. It is. This is available at optionsplay.se. If you sign up right now, you'll be able to have access to it. Any other questions? I know I covered a lot of things here today. I just want to make sure we try to answer as many questions as possible before we move on to the next session, because these sessions all kind of compound and build on top of each other. What you're going to learn here today, you're going to take into the next session. And we're back every single Tuesday at the same time over the next three weeks. Uh, Jessica and I will be teaching this together. She'll be here next week. I'll be here the following week um, and making sure that you guys have this foundational knowledge of options that is extremely, extremely useful in the current market conditions that we find ourselves in.
all trading takes place at a Vonza or Nornet, so no real trading on options play. That's correct. You're paper trading on options play, and you're using options play to track your positions. You're not trading through the options play tool. Uh, someone, someone saying, great session. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Uh, hopefully you find the next three sessions just as great. Um, you know, we're really here to, to dedicate ourselves and making sure that you understand these foundations that are arguably the most important because everything else more advanced, everything else more complex is built on these foundations. That's why we call it the foundational master course. Like I said, the most important part. Um, a question on how to get the report. So we actually send this out to you every single week, but if you want to, um, uh, here, I'll send this link here as well, and we'll include it in the in the um, recording link as well. But the link here to those reports you can find here, we have both a cover call report and a short put report. We'll be covering short puts next week, uh, Tuesday with Jessica. Um, but today we're just here to um, look at cover calls. Next week, we're gonna look at those short put reports. Um, we do not have K APIs uh, for you to use at the moment. If there are no other questions, I just wanna thank everyone for taking the time out here this evening. I really hope that this was helpful in helping you build some of those foundational knowledges of options of options trading. So many of you said that you've never sold a cover call before today's session. I really hope that after today, you consider taking a look at it along with the tools that are available to you to help you better understand how to implement these strategies. So with that, I'm going to sign off here for today. Like I said, the recording and the slides are on its way to you later uh, this evening or no later by tomorrow morning. And Jessica will be back next Tuesday. Uh, we're back here for the next four weeks, next three weeks. But Jessica will be back here next Tuesday to show you the next part in this series. And we're really looking forward to this series. And we have another series planned after this one, which is going to talk about more advanced options, strategies, and concepts. So thank you so much and have a great evening and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.